All right, we are live. Hi there, and I just got the computer open, my trusty computer open here tonight, so that we can look at together the Eureka sale that's uh, going on right now, because Eureka's got a big sale, much bigger than I initially realized, because I just went to one page, and it's basically just showed like the July sale type thing, the kind of the mid-year sale that they do. Uh, but they've also got like two for 25, uh, two for 20, and a TV sale going on as well. I got my Eureka movies up here that we'll, uh, we'll look at as well. I'm going to open up this here so we can actually see. Hey, Javit. Hey, hey uh, Brian there. Hey, Kubrick Glover. What we're going to do is I am going to open up mine here so that I can actually see your uh, comments as they come up so I don't miss anything because I missed stuff the last time around. And before I do anything, I'm going with Pepsi. I actually got a... I went to the store earlier, so I went to the liquor store actually. So I got a cider, I got a lager, and I got an ale. I got one of each, which I will have later on. So, not all of them. Probably just one. I'm a light drinker. Um, anyway, Eureka is a company. Hey, eating dinner at a diner, eating dinner. Well, there, dinner and a movie. There you go. See, right on. Or lots of movies in this case. Eureka is a great company. Eureka is kind of like a, sort of like their criterion in the style and in the type of stuff that they do. Now, uh, you're at work bored? Well, hopefully we can alleviate a little bit of that boredom. By the way, it's, the new shirt tonight is the Beatles Abbey Road 1969 shirt, uh, which I actually picked up today because I picked up a couple shirts and stuff for, uh, for working out with. Now, as any, does anybody here have any Eureka titles? I'm pretty sure, Kubrick Lover, you got some Eureka titles in your collection. Because um, they do have a lot of stuff. They do have kind of crossovers with uh, Criterion. They do do a lot of Criterion. Hey, Borm Strikes. <laughs> hey. Um, and Vinny. Well, so I got just a, a few here. I probably got a lot less than Vinny. Because Vinny, you know, he's got that ability to drive an Uber and get, and get more Blu-rays and DVDs than I got. I'm very jealous. I'm very jealous of you, Vinny, that way. Totally jealous here. Your favorite Beatles album? One, actually, one of mine too. I think my favorite, if I had to like give one right now, it might be Rubber Soul. Like I do like the early stuff, but uh, this is definitely one. Of them. I'm a huge fan of the Beatles. When they did the Beatles Rock Band game, I was one of the first people to go to the store and buy that. And uh, the way we would do it is my. Uh, Kids would sing most of the songs. I'm a horrible singer. And I would sing anything that was uh, done by George Harrison. That's where I could. That was my kind of my range a bit. Not, not as good. Not like George Harrison. Not as good. Don't have any Eurekas? So I'm going to show you guys first the Eurekas that I got. Then I'm going to go through the ones that are on the sale. I got There's four screens open up here. Because there's uh, the mid-year sale Eurekas. Uh, I'm sure Vinny's looked at this already. Hey, Adam, welcome. Uh, there's the two for 25 pound Eurekas. The two for 20 Eurekas. And there's a TV sale because they do some TV stuff as well. So I got, only got one Eureka DVD, but I'll show you that one first. Then it's all Blu-ray. Uh, Eureka is something that will look colorful in your uh, in your movie library. So if you're uh, collecting Eureka and you got a few of them, and Vinny will know this, uh, they're that part of your library in your in your film collection. When you look over at it, they're like a rainbow of colors. They are released in High Noon, actually. Uh, they just announced that, actually. So this is the uh, Prisoner of uh, Shark Island, uh, John Ford. I, I love John Ford. And uh, I love this cover, by the way. Eureka is great when it comes to a lot of these covers. So uh, fantastic cover here. And as always with like the Eureka titles, kind of like the BFI titles, you're uh, going to get an amazing booklet. This, of course, is, a, this is definitely a big one. Yeah, exactly, Jared. Uh, they remind me a lot of Criterion, too. Uh, they have that kind of uh, look to them. And, you know, you got some really great stuff here. Like, they, they pick some super quality essays to go in with these as well. And uh, this one here, like, for instance, if you take it out, it has this here on the other side. The, uh, better than the Olive Signature Edition. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Olive, uh, but that's only because uh, a lot of stuff that they brought out originally was like pretty free of, of like features and stuff like that uh so uh yeah it is a 4k restoration new one coming out right i'm not sure about the olive was the olive in 4k 
I don't, Olive doesn't seem like a company that puts, I could be wrong and it could be totally different now, but it just did not seem like a company that will put like too much into it. I got a couple Fort at Fox box sets actually. There's three of them. Uh, there's three Fort at Fox sets. Uh, maybe there was one box set that had them all, but uh, there was three Fort at Fox sets. Uh, I don't have it from Eureka, of course, but I, I'll show you afterwards actually, because I got two of the sets over there. Uh, this is Eureka one right here, and this is number seven. Uh, first thing I'll let you know is that they have very colorful like spines with the Eureka. So this actually is a really good documentary, and this is uh, this is Soul Power. And great performances in her cell. You know, you got like guys like B.B. King, the Spinners, uh, Don King is here. Uh, he doesn't sing, of course. Muhammad Ali, James Brown. And uh, if you haven't seen this one, basically this is the what's that? The Back to Africa, yeah, three-day musical music fest done in 1974. Uh, really, really cool. You open it up. It's a two-disc set. Again, you're gonna get one of those like sexy booklets that uh, that Eureka does so well. And you're the great Muhammad Ali is on here Cassius Clay himself and they just got like they got some great writing but they just got some fantastic pictures in here as well of the uh of the Back to Africa Fest and uh kind of give you an idea of the whole thing uh basically uh that's when the uh you know Muhammad Ali George Foreman boxing match was uh, was going on they did this kind of music festival there and it was uh it was pretty epic so uh if you have not seen this one I do recommend it uh, very cool, especially if you like music like me, uh, then you're gonna definitely enjoy that. Next up is the uh, classic one that they put out, and that of course is the Cecil B. DeMille's Cleopatra. Uh, I really like this edition. I love this cover. Uh, do, again, you got this cool looking look to the uh, to it as well. There's a bunch of special features on here, uh, like some really great stuff. Uh, the booklet again, which I will show you because it is so sexy. Uh, and there you go, and there is the Cleopatra for this one right here. Again, this is a dual format uh, edition. It has like both Blu-ray and DVD. And just to kind of let you know like some of the features, like on this one right here, for instance, there is like uh, this audio commentary with film critic and scholar F.X. Feeney, 11-minute documentary on director Cecil B. DeMille, 10-minute documentary on Claudette Colbert, a documentary on production code era, 40-page booklet, including 1934 interview with uh, material with mill notes on the film by Craig Keller and rare archival um, stuff so fantastic on there are they releasing I'm not quite sure I'd have to look uh, I'll be honest with you uh, I have not been keeping up on their stuff as much as I should well, especially where I really like their stuff too uh, this is one I do recommend. I don't think this was on the sale maybe it is I don't know hmm let's say uh, the original Cleopatra right on uh, it's is the murder lives at lives at 21 this is really good it's a it's a Henri George Clouseau film, and uh, this is the guy you know that did like, uh, oh god, my god, what's it going? It's killing me. So much, so, so much great stuff that I can't remember right now. And I got it over there with his wife. I can remember the film, and he's getting out of the the bathtub, and oh my god, what a night! This night has been like so. Guys, what am I talking about? Oh, Diabolik. Diabolik is the movie I'm talking about. There we go. He did Diabolik, Wages of Fear, stuff like that. This is another one of his films. This is a much lighter film. Hey, Cinema Dave, we meet again. Uh, but this is a great cover, I got to say, and I do love the uh, kind of the orange, kind of cool, like, spine that it has. Uh, again, you get, like, another kind of really cool booklet in here as well. Clouseau is one of those guys that you can, you're pretty solid, like, when you uh, go for his stuff. And uh, the good thing is, I, uh, as far as I know, I don't think I've never not gotten a, uh, a booklet from, uh, hey George, welcome dude, uh, from, uh, from Eureka. You're, you're pretty solid with booklets from Eureka. Uh, they're all numbered, of course. Hey Mug, welcome. We're talking about the Eureka sale tonight. Uh, this one, this is one I do recommend. If you don't have this one, definitely a fun one to get. More of a lighthearted Clouseau film, but still a really good one nonetheless. Uh, next up is a fantastic documentary. I think this was put up by Criterion as well. I uh, I just really, really love uh, this edition. Hey, Adrian. Uh, and uh, I love the artwork. It's it's so minimalistic, but it, it just is perfect for uh, for this documentary. And that is for all mankind. I love the look of this cover. I, I really, I adore it. And there are some great things on here as well. We got 
you know, new two, 5.1 sound, uh, soundtrack for the film, out of commentary. Uh, there's, a, there's a documentary, a gallery of Alan Bean's artwork inspired by the film, a NASA sound archive, and a liftoff footage. Optional on screen identification of astronauts and mission specialists. This is like super quality stuff. Exactly. This is on Criterion as well. But you know, look at both of them and see which one you like best, man. See if which one you would you'd rather have. Now, this has a great like booklet to here as well. Um with some great write-ups, some fantastic pictures on here. And uh let's see who does a write-up on this one. I just checked, I don't I won't check on everyone of these, but I'll check on this one here for you. Um uh, so we're looking at Wow, uh, there's a ton of information basically talking about the narrators like they really go into it really gets informative about uh, of, of this one But if you got it already, you know, you don't need to double dip on it uh, But if you don't have it, this may be a better way to get it <laughs> Oh, poor dude. Yeah, you saw the Rip Fest thing, hey? Yeah, uh, I, I had a blast at Rip Fest We were going there and I better have, we're li hey, hey, missing. My uh, better half, like she's younger than me. Uh, so she puts on the Pitbull channel on Sirius. Hey, Stack. Uh, good movie. Um, and uh, she's like, we're driving and she's like dancing. And I'm like shaking my old man fist and, oh, mu this music's too loud for me. I know. <laughs> uh, a, a fantastic Sasha Gutry film. If you don't have this one, get it. I don't care what, what you get down, but I love this. Le Poisson, fantastic film. Really funny, really cool, really dark, black humor. Uh, but it, it is awesome. It is uh, a film that my better half introduced me to. Uh, I did not know much about this film before, uh, be, before I saw it. But guys, this is really, really good. This is a really fantastic film. Basically, it's about a couple, a man and a wife, that have gotten to the point where their relationship is not just no longer working. They hate each other. Uh, they, they don't want to get divorced. They really seriously want to see the other person dead. Um, and uh, it plays out in a humorous way. Um, he goes, there's one point where he goes to his, uh, to his priest, his local priest, and he says, uh, you know, I, I really, I really wish, you know, I, I, I could kill my wife, you know, is, you know, would God forgive me for that uh, type of thing. He even goes to like a, a liar at one point and says, okay, and, and admits like to the murder of his wife that has not happened. Uh, it's a really cool film. Uh, if you've never seen it, like, uh, Mikhail Simone's in this one, and it's really good. It's really fun. And I do love the booklet on here. Next up is one, is a film by Claude Chabral. Hey, and ready. Nice. Did you get many films? I will, I always, like, like pimp at one-on-one -on -one films because you do have some great stuff. I would love to get a black label one. Did you get any black labels? See, I didn't get any black labels this time. Three. Ooh. What'd you get? I'm kind of interested. Or do you want to leave it for your channel and like kind of like have a video where you're unboxing it? Because that's cool too. Just let me know when the video comes up so I can watch it. Le Beau Serge, which is in English, Handsome Serge. Uh, or Serge, however you want to put it. I'm a huge fan of Claude Chabral, so I do get a lot of his films. I have a collection of his from Arrow Films. Uh, this is a really good edition. Uh, there's some great stuff on here as well. They put out two of his films. This has actually a 56-minute documentary about the making of the film. There is a short film by Chabral on here done from 1962. The, it's a 32-page booklet. And they also put out Les Cousins, or the Cousins. Uh, and... Uh, I got that one as well because you know if it's Chabral, I, I got to pick it up. And again, uh, some great stuff. Again, another 47-minute documentary on this one here, a 36-page booklet on here with vintage writing by Jean-Luc Godard. Uh, great stuff and uh, fantastic. Anything about Chabral, I'm, you know, I'm down with. I'm, I'm pretty big on him. Next up is an original and a classic, and I love this case. I really, really do. And this is Wings. I'm pretty sure this was put in North America as well, but I, uh, I do love this edition. Uh, again, really cool film. There's a 48-page booklet. There are three video documentary pieces on this film talking about the production, the restoration, and airplanes. And uh, just some really great stuff. There's even an interview with, uh, with William A. Wellman by Scott Eamon that's, on the, uh, that's in the booklet here as well. 
and I think it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty thick one, because it's like 48 pages or something like that. And it is a classic, you know, it's a classic film. And see, I'm just going through my collection. We haven't even gotten to the Eureka sale, because there's so much more on the sale that I got to talk to you about. Um, another one everybody should have. Vinny, if you're still here, dude, grab this one if you don't have it. If. Uh, it is a really, really great film. You are correct. It is the first uh, film to win Best Picture. That's probably what it's most famous for right now. It's kind of like, it's almost like a trivia. It's, I'm Canadian. Trivia Pursuit was the thing in Canada. I, I, it's kind of got bigger over the world for a while. Uh, it's a game. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's like a trivia Pursuit question. The first picture everyone won Oscar's wings uh, for Best Picture. If, fantastic film, uh, great, great work by uh, by McDowell and this one here as well. A really cool edition. We got like some, uh, some like short films on here, like three short films, the video interviews on here. Um, just some incredible stuff. If you've never seen If, uh, I, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's an amazing film. You guys are so quiet tonight. You just let me like kind of ramble on. Fritz Lang's uh, Spies. Again, love this stuff. It's a two disc edition. Uh, we get like a uh, alternate cover art for this one here, which looks pretty much the same except with the well, pretty much with a different color. Just got this one from, from Criterion. I knew they would eventually put this out. Did they put this out? Oh wow. Okay, I didn't know they put it out actually. You haven't watched it yet? It's a, anything Fritz Lang you're solid with, man. And I'm not sure it's on the Criterion one, but this one here has basically the original English intertitles with optional in, uh, original German intertitles with optional English subtitles. There's it's seventy. It's got a seventy-one minute long documentary on the Blu-ray only, a fifty-two page booklet containing rare, some exclusive writing on on this by Jonathan Rosenbaum, uh, and other people. Disappointed that movie really? I like Fritz Lang. I, it's been a while since I've seen it, but uh, have to go. And before we get to the sale part, have a great evening. Enjoy your Saturday, man. <laughs> Next up is Ganja and Hess. Yes, they don't only put out like those super cool classic Criterion ones. This is one that, that should be on Criterion, to be totally honest with you. Ganja and Hess is an amazing film. If, if you haven't seen it, it's something that you should see. It's a, and it, it is a black exploitation horror film, but it's a smart film. It's an extremely smart film. And uh, this is a great edition of it, by the way. Uh, on this one here, you're getting like a uh, feature and commentary on here. There's like uh, Blood of the, of the Thing. Film is during David Kallitz. Uh, leads an interview-based documentary about the film. Uh, the original screenplay is available through uh, DVD and, and uh, Blu-ray ROM. There's a 24-page booklet on here. Uh, fantastic, fantastic film. Really well done. Uh, I don't know if I've seen the remake that was done by uh, Spike Lee. Uh, but uh, I'll stand by the original, anyway. And last but not least, the Eureka that pretty much, like, even if you don't like the classic stuff, almost everybody has, and that is Fright Night. For real. Uh, this was a fantastic edition of this. A lot of people grab this because uh, even if they had the, uh, like, like me, for instance, I've got the Twilight Time edition of Fright Night. Why did I need this? Because this has the documentary. Uh, you're so cool, Brewster, uh, on here as well. So uh, you want to you wanna get that because it's got the documentary now. The Sony edition put it out, but I still think this looks a bit sexier and a lot of, lot of features, by the way, a lot of features. Again, it is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. There, look, with good old Chris Sarandon on the, on the inside cover. All right, so let's talk about what they got going on right now. And I knew you'd have that in ready. Isn't that a great edition? Well, let's talk about what they got going on in the sale right now. So I got my trusty computer open up here because I did not make the same mistake that I did last time of not bringing my computer. Um, so we are going to go through what's on their stuff. We'll go through all of it. We'll go through it pretty quickly. Uh, but if there's anything you're kind of curious about, if I know anything about it or if I can check on it for you, I will. I will list the prices. Um, and there are actually some pretty cool prices. So just so you know, this sale is ending... Uh, at 9 a.m. on July the 15th, so not a not a lot of time if you want to grab some stuff on the sale, but let's let's go. Let's start up. 
So, oh great. And we're starting it with a Pier Piallo Pasolini film. Hey, De Catana. Uh, and it's called uh, Love Meetings, or in its own language, something I'm not going to pronounce wrong, a Catone plus Camozzi di Amore. Uh, so that's there for eight pounds ninety nine pence. So eight ninety nine. Uh, next up is the classic Burt Lancaster film Birdman of Alcatraz, which I actually really do need. Uh, and this is again a dual format edition there for nine ninety nine. Uh, Cover Girl, you know, the Rita Hayworth Gene Kelly classic is here for eight ninety nine. There's a Cure uh, Kiwa. Oh okay, <laughs> uh, the is a, uh, which is like a uh, I think it's, it's an Asian film, and that one is uh, is nine ninety nine. Death in the Garden, a film by Louis Benal, is here. Uh, uh, La Morte in C Jardin, uh, and that one is eight ninety nine. There's a, a set here. The early, oh God, I'm totally gonna pronounce this wrong. Ho Haseo Hassan. Uh, Three films, 1980 to 1983. It's, uh, it's a Blu-ray set, and that one's like $15.99. Uh, Fedora is here. That one is going for uh, $7.99. Uh, Gate of Hell, that one is also by, by Criterion. This will have a bit more features and a better cover, too. I got Gate of Hell. It doesn't have a very good cover. This one is really nice. Uh, for $8.99. Harmonium is here for $9.99. Uh, House Hezo, Hezo is a... Uh, which of course you know is the Japanese like really crazy one, but Criterion put out is here for nine ninety nine. Inherit the Wind is a fantastic film. Spencer Tracy, Frederick March, Gene Kelly. If you haven't seen it, definitely see it. Is here for nine ninety nine. Journey to the Shore is eight ninety nine. A lot of lot of Asian films. Uh, Kings of Hearts is here, which is uh, Philippe de Braca, and that is uh, nine ninety nine. Legend of the Mountain is here, and that one is nine ninety nine. Uh, Marty again, a classic Berg, uh, Ernest Borgnine film. Is here for eight ninety nine. Medium cool, medium cool is really good, and that is here for eight ninety nine. If you haven't seen that one, I recommend it. Um, Michael is here for nine ninety nine, and that's Carl Dreyer, of course. Uh, Pick up on South Street, kind of a cool classic film. If you haven't seen it, that one's here for eight ninety nine. Repo Man, that one came out by Criterion as well. That's here for eight ninety nine. And wow, yeah, there's a lot of like uh, Asian films there. Tag uh, is out for eight ninety nine. The Defiant ones, Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier. And they got like great covers on these, by the way, just to let you know. Uh, it's here for eight ninety nine. The morning the morning M O U R N. Uh the which one? Because uh, you said there's lag, so you said Fuller. Uh, which film? So I won't go any further. I wanna You're wondering if, oh, if, if Pickup is the Fuller film? Yep, that is the one. And just to give you an idea of uh, what it is, it has it comes with a 36-page booklet, a new exclusive interview with Kent Jones. There's a video interview with Francois Gorif. Cinema, Cinema Cinema is a Samuel Fuller interview is here as well. So uh, some really, actually really cool stuff here. No, you heard me right, man. That is Samuel Fuller. There is the Ninja Trilogy. Yep, the Ninja Trilogy. Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, and Ninja 3, The Domination for $19.99. It actually comes in a really cool box set as well. Uh, if you want to get The Old Dark House, which is a classic, uh, really cool old Karloff film. It's the Karloff edition of it. Hey, B-Movie Archives. That's there for $9.99. The uh, Classic Passion of Joan of Arc is here for uh, $9.99. Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, the Billy Wilder film. It's here for $9.99. Uh, Tokyo Sonata. Which of course is uh, Kurosawa, Kiyoshi Kurosawa, uh, is here for seven ninety nine. Two for the Road with Albert, uh, Audrey Hepburn and Albert Finney. This is Stanley Donan that's here for uh, for eight ninety nine. And Wings, which I just showed you, is also there for eight ninety nine. Eureka! You're right. We're talking Eureka tonight. Now going from there to, I'm going to list some out here, and these here are all two for twenty. So you can grab two for twenty, on, and this is where it tempts me. This is where it gets tempting, guys. This is where I. I want them. Uh, so, uh, not everyone, but there's a fear that tempts me. So, there's Dunbass is here. Pray for Death. I did actually, that's a, uh, that's been a while ago. That's Shio Kazuji, right? I'm pretty sure that came out, uh, Pray for Death, and uh, there's Rage of Honor. There's, there's a few of them, but uh, 
I don't remember it very well, but I remember liking it. I, I like pretty much everything in the show. I got a, like a blind spot for Show Kazuji. I really like a lot of his stuff. Uh, Hitler's Hollywood. I really want this one. Uh, from Caligari to Hitler. So it's a documentary on on basically on on, on you know cinema, German cinema, uh, done during the uh, the Nazi regime. And I want to open this one up and look at it because this one's here for twelve ninety nine. I really would like to own this one. Uh, I'm not sure if Criterion put this one out or not. I, I don't think so. Did they? So there's uh, option of the original English language version with English subtitles, or you can watch the English language version uh, narrated by Udo Kair. 36 Chamber. Oh, nice. Good movie. And there's from Caligari to Hitler, German cinema in the age of the masses. Uh, director Rudger Schuckland's 2014 documentary on the social and cultural impact of German cinema during the Weimar Republic. So there's a, there's a bunch of stuff on here, special feature-wise. Uh, Kills on Wheels. Uh, Lucky, you know, Harry Dean Stanton. Fantastic film. Uh, there's actually two editions. There's Blu-ray and DVD, that one. Uh, so you can buy like the Blu-ray for twelve ninety nine, or you can buy the DVD for twelve ninety nine. I would just buy the Blu-ray. But that's just me. Uh, New World is here for uh, twelve ninety nine. But forget twelve ninety nine because these are all two for twenty, guys. Uh, so and these, all these I'm telling you right now, two for twenty. November is here. Uh, Reborn, which is an, an Asian film. Uh, Shirley Visions of Reality. I think I saw that one. Strangled, based on a true story. I don't know that one. Eureka, yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. Suntan, love the cover on Suntan. Uh, the Butterfly Tree, The Housemaid, the Olive Tree, The Third Wife, The Tiger, uh, on Blu-ray or DVD. I can't see why you'd get the DVD if you can get a Blu-ray. And Under the Tree. So that's all, all those are two for 20, right? So we're getting into the two for 25 stuff. You guys are so quiet tonight. So uh, speak up, man. Speak up here. Uh, there's only so much I can do if you guys don't talk to me. Uh, got the housemate. Is it a good one, Cold Blue? Did you get the Eureka edition of it? So in the 2 for 25, we got stuff like A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, which is a classic, excellent film by Ilya Kazan. Uh, Cockle Shell Heroes. I don't remember that one. Wheels on Meals, classic. Um, come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. Uh, Coming Home, which was one of those that early destroyed me when I was younger. Human Desire by Fritz Lang. Irma La Douche, One, Two, Three, Billy Wilder, of course, Sink to Bismarck, The Holy Mountain, The Incident, The Night of the Generals, The White Reindeer, uh, The Woman in the Window, Under Fire, and Used Cars. So we got some like newer stuff, like well, not newer, but like 80s stuff, like Under Fire and Used Cars, and some classic Edward like Robinson stuff, like uh, like The uh, Woman in the Window. And now let's quickly go through the TV stuff, because I'm guessing you guys aren't going to be that interested in that. But Grace and Favor, which is, of course, Are You Being Served Again? Uh, is here just old friends? I just good friends. I remember that one. Uh, Maelstrom mystery. That one's here. Uh, there is Maid Marian and her Merry Man, the complete series, um, and these like range in price. So Grace and Favor, which is the Are You Being Served Again? I think that's the one that they did in Australia. Is uh, is twenty pounds? I don't I don't remember it actually. Just good friends is uh, twenty two. A Maelstrom is eight ninety nine, and Maid Marian and her Merry Man is uh, twenty two. Nanny is here for uh, the complete series for uh, 15 pounds. The Resistance is 9.99. The British Empire is 19.99. The Dark Side of the Sun is 8.99. And Wolf Creek, the complete first season, which I actually really friggin' liked, was set is 7.99. See, that's something I'd pick up. Uh, I really liked Wolf Creek season one. I haven't seen season two yet. So that is the Eureka sale, and I'm gonna. Tony Robinson is a sheriff. I think it is, actually. Uh, if it's the one I remember, I think it is. Let's look and do it here. Yep. Written by and starring Tony Robinson as a sheriff from Nottingham. Uh, of course, you know, I guess he's best known for Baldrick, right? Uh, so, and just so you know, with the Maid Marion one, you're getting, like, the Christmas special, of course. Uh, you get... I do commentaries by the cast, made, Marion, karaoke, interactive games, improvised, sketch, improvised sketches by the cast, Easter eggs, photo gallery, compendium booklet, and, uh, of course, trailers and stuff. <laughs> Dude, being critical is totally allowed. That, that's kind of the whole idea behind it. 
The only time critical is bad is like a uh, when like a uh, you're like bloody disgusting and you do like this horribly written review of Scream the TV series. Uh, don't click on it and read it. Basically, uh, they did like this. The season, this season of the show makes a mockery, and it is it's really badly written. I've ever seen White Dog? I did actually. I think that uh, Eureka put that one out as well. It's not in the sale here, but I'm pretty sure they put it out because I know they're uh, they're the company that uh, that got that one. But that's all my Eureka stuff. That's the entire sale. We've gone through the entire sale for Eureka. Uh, as you guys know, the Arrow sale is ending on the fifteenth. So, oh yeah. <laughs> As soon as the uh, same as this one is. Do I like wages? I love wages of fear. I actually like the sorcerer too, sorcerers, uh, which is you know the remake of it, but uh, with Roy Schreider. I thought I thought they're both good. Uh, I like wages of fear better, but I, I do think that the Roy Schreider one definitely has its place. Um, and it's a shame, like he really really thought a lot of that film when he was making it. The White Rainer is actually one of the ones that I mentioned here in the sale. You ha how can you hate Wages of Fear? Wages of Fear is one of those films that is so extremely wild and so tense, like, all the way through. Uh, like, Clouseau is a master of, like, of building tension. And just, like, def yeah. It's supposed to be slow. That's the idea. <laughs> the idea behind the film is for it to is to slowly build that uh, that tension level, especially the type of film that it is and the way that it's going. The Vikings is that the one with Tony Curtis, Cool Blue? That's one of my dad's favorite films. If it is, I know he bought like a Blu-ray of that one a while back. You gotta see it, B Movie Archives. It's a really good film. Uh, if you like Diabali and you like, you know, stuff like, if you like like tense films, um, then uh, you're gonna want to get Wages of Fear because it is it's one of those best. Like, it's up there right right alongside Diabali because one of his is one of his is one of his best films, and like there's a reason for that. It's uh, it it is geniusly done. Maybe you'd be better with the remake then, uh, Brian. But uh, with uh, with Schrader. But I actually do. I, I do like the first one. But guys, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you tonight. If you guys, you guys are not talkative tonight, there's not a lot I can do. This will be a short video. <laughs> um, the Brood. That happens to me. I mean, like last night, I was going to sit down. I was gonna like. I had my movie like. Planned stuff planned out. I had like there was two movies I was gonna watch. I was gonna get all this stuff done, but I went upstairs. Uh, like after I was talking, I had like I did some dishes. I got some like, like some housework and stuff done. Uh, you know, hung with the cats for a tiny bit. Went upstairs, went to my room, and uh, turned down my computer. Uh, said okay, I uh, I've got like this uh, DVD player that I uh, you know DVD drive that I plug into it so I can watch films upstairs. And uh, I, was, I was getting ready to put a film in. I was actually I was going to watch a Doctor Who uh, episode, uh, and um, I just passed out. So, no Cybermen for me last night. Though, it, interesting news: the uh, they did announce that the for people that watch Doctor Who, um, that the Cybermen are making a super big comeback in the next series of Doctor Who, and I'm actually really excited about that. Night to Remember is. The and and with, in my not so humble opinion, Night to Remember is hands down, bar none, the best version of the Titanic story ever filmed. The Cameron one cannot even touch it, can't even come close. Cameron one's cute and it's got some nice information and stuff like that. But when Night to Remember was an, was was a good film, it was well shot, interesting, interestingly done, well made. The entire time I was watching the Cameron um, film, 
uh, I was like, sink. Just, just let me see sink. Just let me see sink. I think I missed a couple of comments there. I gotta get used to these glasses as well. That'll do it, B movie. Corner Wild? Uh, I think so. I'd have to look. Uh, let's see. I can do that in here now because I got my computer with me. Nineteen fifty-eight. Roy Ward Baker directed that one, which is fantastic because I love Roy Ward Baker. Let's see who? That's, I'm not seeing his name here, but that doesn't mean it's not. There's a, what a cast! So, so we got Kenneth Moore, Michael Goodlife, Lawrence Nesmith, Kenneth Griffin, Dave McCallum, Tucker McGuire, Frank. Frank Lawton, Richard Leach, Jim Kearney, Richard Clark, Patrick Mc, McElhenney, Anthony Bushel, Alec McCohen, uh, Jill Dixon. Oh, man, that's a big cast. Uh, you could be in there somewhere. <laughs> they do release some of the same films. And they release a lot of like the really, a lot of like really what they consider again really the important films. But they go a step farther because Ganja and Hess is a film that I also considered one of the important films but it's one where i think you know criterion pod wouldn't touch it which is a shame bfi needs to do a sale bfi usually does a sale jab it around the time you used to they do in london anyway around the time that the bfi film festival is every year and and ready you're totally right there's way too many sales right now it's way too tempting But there is so much. I mean, there's so much good stuff coming on. Usually the BFI Film Festival, if I'm right, anybody here can tell me, is, uh, is I think it's in, is it around October, somewhere around there? To me and your wife, who's the king of action? You say Sylvester Sloan, she says Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, well, okay, you mean like an 80s action? I mean, obviously you mean 80s action if you're talking about Sylvester Sloan and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I'm going to have to go... Uh, you're going to hate me for this, but I'm going to go with your wife for the action portion of it. Uh, like, Stallone's a better actor than, than Arnold Schwarzenegger, hands down. Better writer, obviously does more. He's fingers in the pie, a bit more with his stuff. But Commando. Uh, Commando's pretty perfect as an action film. Um, myself, like, I like guys like Michael Dudikoff and, uh, and Chuck Norris and people like that. Uh, so I, even Bronson, I kind of go towards more towards their stuff, right? Uh, but uh, but I guess out of those two, uh, T2, yes, another big one. I got to go with Schwarzenegger because he does have more of that high impact, high voltage action stuff. So hopefully you don't hate me for that. But I got to go with Schwarzenegger, even though uh, I do I do love Stallone stuff, and I think uh, he is a great actor. Yeah, but still, Daylight, Daylight is, is, is slower. I mean, Daylight is not a fast, action-packed film. Uh, like, hands, it's not. I mean, like, it's more of a drama. Uh, Cobra, it's it's good, I mean, and it's got some great stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's got that line that Jeff just said. But again, it not, nothing compares to the to the action. Uh, even Cliffhanger, but that's a later film. Still, I See You is a great film, but neither one of the, like, Cliffhanger is a good action film. I See You, it's a horror, it's a, it's a thriller. But again, you know, when you're looking at stuff like you're looking at Commando and Terminator 2, um, you know, all the other, like, action-oriented films he made. Uh, Demolition Man is, again, okay. Um, tell you what. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's look at their output. So let's bring up Arnold Schwarzenegger. Good question. I like this. This is really good. This, this, this is cool. See, if you're just saying who's the better filmmaker, Stallone. Stallone's a better filmmaker. Uh, you know, because he's got Rocky. He's got all that stuff there. Um, so we're going to go down to their films. And I'm going to focus on the 80s. We're going to focus on the 80s, right? Uh, I know Last Action Hero is a good film. But it doesn't count. It's, it, it's a parody of action movies. And uh, that, that's, that's kind of what it's meant to be. Uh, 
so we can't like put last, last action arrow in there and that and because let's be honest it's uh it's it's a later film when we're if you're gonna be like comparing Stallone and Schwarzenegger you're comparing their 80s output you're not comparing their 90s out output because that's really different and really varied uh, but let's do it let's go look at their 80s stuff let's look at their filmography we'll go with their late 70s early 80s stuff that's usually the best to go with uh, so I'm gonna bring up their films here and don't get me wrong Stallone probably has more films that I like but if I'm going out, we're going to go on, on one, precip one precipice, which is action. We're going to look for action films alone. And when you think of action, don't forget, there's the first blood films. Uh, so we'll start in like, we'll start in like 1979, for instance, okay? We'll start there. So there's no, well, Rocky II, but I don't consider that an action film. That's a drama. But uh, from the, th these are Stallone's films. Uh, in the 80s. All right, you ready for this? Uh, that uh, that are action oriented. I'm not going to say anything that's not action oriented. Oh, I, I don't doubt like how, that that Stallone's a cool guy. I would I would say he's, he's a really cool guy, but uh, we're we're going on, on one thing here. So we got like First Blood, fantastic action film. Rambo, First Blood, way more action film than, than First Blood actually. Uh, Cobra, well, Rambo three, uh, Lock Up and tango and cash uh we'll go to 1993 and we get like stop and my mom was shoot which is kind of in cliffhanger if we want to go to 1990 uh, which and you also get like demolition man there so that's the action films now we'll go to uh schwarzenegger as well and we got like conan the barbarian conan the destroyer we get we got the terminator film uh, over the top's not an action film, man. I, I do not consider over the top an action film. Uh, I'm sorry, no. I saw it in theater, and it's not an action film. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's it, it's it's fun. It's not an action film. It's got Terry Funk in it, man. Uh, but it's not still not an action film. We got Rid Sonya. We got Commando. We got Raw Deal. We got Predator. Uh, we got The Running Man. You got Red Heat. Still not one of my favorites, but still, uh, uh, it has one there. Uh, I get. We got Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, Terminator Two. If you want to conclude last section here, I like that. That's one on my side, but I don't include it. Um, and again, if you want to go to 1994, you get True Lies as well. Uh, I think it goes with it saying that the films on each of the, the films with the most actions, action, whether you, you know you like it or not, uh, or you like him or not, it's Schwarzenegger. There's more action in the Schwarzenegger films than there is. In the uh, in the Sloan films, uh, action wise, yeah, action wise, it's not even close. Uh, like the brunt of the Stallone action films, they're those three Rambo films. Like that's that that's pretty much it. The other ones are kind of like seminal action films. You got to understand, Stallone made made action films, but he tried to uh, like he was a writer too, so he was trying to make stories. He was trying to do uh, a bit more with his films. With when Schwarzenegger, you know, he was coming to. Uh, you know, he came over to, uh, you know, I think his first film was in 69 and uh, was still, you know, with the language, you know, type of thing. He, he was, it was uncomfortable. So a lot of his films were more towards action. Uh, I, I can't, dude. I mean, you can't top her with this one. This is the thing. Uh, like, and even like, so Schwarzenegger's also made one of my favorite films of all time, which you're probably not aware of. Uh, there's a movie, and it's pretty much a live-action uh, film of a film. It's a live-action kind of like a Wile E. Coyote type film. It's called The Villain, and it stars Kirk Douglas. But it has like uh, like, uh, and he's the villain, right? And it has Arnold Schwarzenegger as pretty much the uh, the handsome stranger. Um, and it literally, it's like hour and a half long, like slapstick style cartoon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you've never seen it, it's a really great Western, and uh, I definitely recommend it. But yeah, action-wise, you know, it's 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 a non, non contest. Uh, Movie-wise, uh, there's probably more Stallone films than I like uh, Schwarzenegger films, but that's just my my personal preference. Uh, but so then again, Schwarzenegger's got like some classics: Conan the Barbarian and The Destroyer. I remember seeing those as a double feature when I was in uh, in uh, as a kid. Uh, Terminator, uh, like command, but. I mean, like, when you say Commando, when you say, like, who, what's better? Who's better at action, Sylvester Sloan or Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, 
when you say the word commando, and you say, well, he did commando and raw deal and predator in a row, then then that just kills it. <laughs> and then then there's, there's no way to like go past the argument with that, because then you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, he did. And <laughs> commando is like probably the most action uh, ever. <laughs> Oh, we're talking Batman here. Roger Ebert said Christopher Nolan did Batman the best. I don't know how many comics Roger Ebert read, but I'll tell you one thing: not enough, because no, no Christopher Nolan didn't do Batman the best. Not even close. Uh, this is a, this one is more of a matter of opinion than Schwarzenegger's Stallone thing. But uh, you wanted to get me talking about Batman. Okay, uh, no. Uh, Christopher Nolan is a fantastic filmmaker, a visionary, much in the line of Kubrick. And much in the line of Kubrick, he took a lot of liberties when it came to how he did his Batman film. Uh, in, the, in the same way that Kubrick took a lot of liberties in how that he did his The Shining film. Uh, is there some masterful work in acting? in the Nolan films. Are the great film noirs? Yes. Yes, they are. Are the great Batman films? No, not quite. And uh, do you know why? I'll tell you a secret. Christian Bale sucks as Batman. He's horrible in the role. He is atrociously bad in the role of Batman. Like, super bad. In the role, I'm I'm not even joking. Uh, do I do I like Night Nighthawks is one of my favorite films. Uh, I got it in the, in the Shout Select edition over there. By the way, it's a really good edition. I recommend it. I don't like everything Tim Burton does. Not even close. Have you ever seen the Willy Wonka film? It sucks. Uh, but Tim Burton gets Batman. He gets the character of Batman. Website for the sale is, I'll get it for you right now, eurekavideo.co.uk. So that's eurekavideo.co.uk. So you have to remember that when it comes to, uh, oh no, no, nobody's saying the Dark Knight sucks. What we're, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, not we're saying, I'm not talking for everybody, um, <laughs> is that the film the dark knight works with his version of the joker although i don't i love heath ledger's portrayal of the character of the joker i don't think it's a really good joker i think it's a great character though uh i do think aaron eckhart really stands out and never gets any credit for it as in the role of two-face i think he, he's brilliant i i still think christian bell sucks as as batman i think he does a mediocre job as bruce wayne and he does a horrific job as Batman. He he's never convincing in the in the Batman costume, and his his voice his Batman voice does not work. Uh, it's not scary. It doesn't make sense. And shouldn't you ask Batman? Who's, <laughs> who do you think is the best Batman? <laughs> Come on, dude. Don't say Christian Bale. <laughs> um, George. <laughs> um, the best person that's ever, I think, if you're talking a lot, like, on the big screen, uh, on, on the big screen, then, for me, I, I Michael Keaton, he it, it does the role really, really well. Uh, it, it, uh, see, I think he sucks as Batman. Like, I, I don't care if Christian Bale is, as a person. Uh, I just, I just hate it. I, I got the movies on 4K. Uh, and, <laughs> and but he's he just not a good Batman. I, I grew up. This is my character. This is like Batman and Spider-Man. These were Superman. Those were the characters I grew up with. I was like super big on like these uh, on, on these characters. So nobody's more excited than me. Like when like hearing like there's a really big filmmaker who's going to be doing a Batman film. Um, but Michael Keaton on the screen and the way that he plays the character is someone that you can see, you can look at him. Oh, Nich Nicholson, 100%, and I'll explain that in a second, actually. I'll get, I'll come, I'll get back to that. Um, when, he, when he's playing the role of 
of Bruce Wayne. And he's, he's, he's damaged and, and he's hurting. And he's, he's conflicted. You, he doesn't need to show a lot. It's, 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 it's in his eyes. It's, it's when he takes off his glasses. It's when he glances. It's when he looks a, uh, a certain way. It, uh, it's brilliant acting and it's done minimalistically. He doesn't have to go too, it doesn't have to go too far out there to, uh, to do it. Um, he just, he, he just does it. And, and, and he does it effortlessly. Um, when Bale plays the role, he's acting. And he never, ever seems real in the role of, he never seems like he's comfortable in the role of, of Bruce Wayne. Uh, the most comfortable he is actually is in, in Batman Begins, and I find he's less comfortable as he goes through with the role. Uh, but he's never, never comfortable in the skin of Batman. He never is believable in, as, in the character of Batman. Kilmer, again, highly underrated as well. Uh, do you have a top 10 DC heroes? Uh, I will get to that afterwards, actually. I don't think Robert Pattinson will, actually, De Katana. If you've ever seen, uh, like, forget Twilight. I mean, like, seriously, forget Twilight, right? Uh, because Robert Pattinson has. He was embarrassed doing those movies, but he got, he, he got roped into them, and he had to do them. He, the, he got contracted. If you've ever seen, like, any interviews or any, like, time he's actually doing Twilight, um, that... Uh, then you realize, then you realize, like he, he was, like, he was hor having a horrible time. But if you've seen Pattinson's work afterwards, he did a lot of indie work and stuff like that. Uh, Pattinson's a really, really good actor. Uh, the fact that you know that he's coming in, a lot of people are saying, "Well, he made Twilight." Uh, yeah, that's the thing, though. You can make a lot of money, but when I was going to go into acting, uh, I never thought, "Hey, I want to go into acting and I want to make big budget films and make a lot of money." That wasn't my thing. That wasn't the key thing for me. I wanted to act on stage. I didn't care about like making a film. I wanted to do stage. Or I said, if I can't do stage, if there's a time when I can't do stage, then I want to do like a soap opera or something like that. Because it's a different script every day and it's raw and it's real and, and, and you're working and, and, and you're challenged. And I don't find movie acting to be like superly challenging. Uh, things are done out of order. It's, you know, you, you do things ad nauseum until it works. You put it together, okay. But acting wise for me, Stage was a thing. I'm not, I'm not acting snob that way. Um, I'll, I'll totally, I'll totally admit that. Uh, but, uh, but I oh, anyway asked about Ledger uh, and uh, and Nicholson. Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight is top notch. It is an amazingly, like layered, fantastic, incredible performance. I want to get that. I want to say that first. I want like to say that so before I go any further. Nicholson was born to play the role of the Joker. And Nicholson is the Joker. He becomes the Joker. People say, oh, well, he's just playing Jack Nicholson. No, he's not just playing Jack Nicholson. It's just that the character of the Joker works so well for Jack Nicholson that when you when the movie came out and he said, well, look at that. He's a Jack Nicholson's playing the Joker. Nobody ever thought to say, like, I wonder if Jack Nicholson can play the Joker. Because, no, he's, he was made for this role. And Jack Nicholson doesn't just play Jack Nicholson. Um, Jack Nicholson is, really, is, is a much better actor than, uh, than a lot of people really give him credit for. And people say, well, he just plays himself. Like, go look at, go look at Five Easy Pieces. Go look at the stuff that he does in, uh, in, in Batman. There, there's, there's little nuances. Uh, that, yeah, that, you know, Burton nailed the villain. He did. He, he nailed the villain casting. Uh, is that true, though? I, I heard that was, I heard there was a rumor that Jack Nicholson warned Ledger about playing the Joker because you got to go to such a dark place. But I'm not sure if that's really true. Uh, I, you don't, and I don't agree that you got to go there uh, because I will tell you one thing right now uh that that i believe strongly and uh the method acting is is utter bs you either you you can get out there and and you, you can act and you can study it or, or or you or you can't or or you gotta i don't believe in method acting mark hamill but he's yeah mark hamill's fantastic as a joker uh but uh, he's again we're, we're talking live action uh, and right now, and you're gonna, you guys are gonna like 
not you're not gonna like to hear this uh, uh, like especially you guys that like Keith Ledger you're not gonna like to hear this or you know if you're a fan of the other two but right now I'll, I'll be honest with you um, Cameron Monaghan who did Jeremy Velasquez in Gotham did yes Olivier did call it pretending because Olivier is smart and Olivier is one of the greatest actors of all time um, a, 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 Cameron Monaghan that played Jeremy Velasquez who wasn't allowed to be called the Joker played a Joker just as good and just as layered as Ledger and Nicholson and he took stuff from both of them it wasn't that he was very very snooty about it Wolf it's that they were very is that he thought method acting was that he thought method acting was very very snooty uh that's you know that's the thing is that he said you know just just bloody act is was is pretty much the thing and it, it comes back from when he was making uh was it the marathon man uh, i think something like that with with dustin hoffman uh, he's doing that like olivier's older uh man moving around all that type of stuff it's it, it's it's hard right it's like he's getting older and stuff like that and he's acting and he's doing this and dustin hoffman is he's young and he's going and he's like you know what what about my you know i got to do my uh not de niro now not really now sometimes i don't think he does very often now um but but dustin hoffman kept like stopping the scene this it's a big chase scene you know uh, he's, he kept stopping the scene. He's like, "No, I gotta get, I gotta get into character. I gotta get my, you know, I, I, I gotta get this done right." And Olivier is like, he's going and they're doing the scene over and they're doing the scene over. And Olivier is an older guy; he's in his seventies by this point, and and it's a big chase. Him. It's hard on Olivier, and he just turns around at one point and he looks at Dustin Hoffman and he says, "Like, just act, you know, just act. It's not, it's not rocket scientist. You get paid to play pretend. Just, just act." that's what acting is uh, you don't need I don't think you do anyway uh, I, I get on huge rants about that uh, what this is back from my days of like, days you know theater and stuff I always hated when somebody would come in to the theater and uh, we'd be doing a play or something and uh, they'd you couldn't like you couldn't get next to them or they were doing some they were doing some type of like thing where basically you know I have to walk around all day like the character or I can't do the role then you're not very good are you uh, because if you're really good then you know what action okay there you go then then you start no you know okay cut then you're you again what's my favorite film noir okay <laughs> yeah, thanks for distracting me that's good um, but uh my favorite film are god uh there's so many let's see it's over there uh i really love narrow margin uh there's a really great one with uh oh god uh robert mitchell a uh, logan counts as noir uh, though i think logan is more of a western than noir um my favorite is let me just check right here because i'm i'm not good with names tonight this is killing me guys it's totally killing me uh, it's not that one it's not that set where the hell is the set at I can't see it guys I cannot see it Red Tornado's Marvel he's been done horribly sometimes by the way so let's find out here I love the fact that you have my computer here I think it's called Born to Kill out of the past that's what it is out of the past that's my favorite one which name i cannot remember thank you very much uh it's one of those nights i do apologize but out of the past that is my favorite noir of all time i've watched it god in the last two or three years i've watched it so many times like uh born kills learners turn that's that's another one i love thank you uh, will i do a noir episode yes i will I'm actually looking to do one in the in the very near future. Build my gals. I don't. I like it in the past because because the way that it's done. I mean, like, because it is, really, it is his his past. 
Uh, can I recommend some arts? I will. I tell you what, Javid, uh, this week sometime I'm going to do an OR episode specifically for, you, for uh, based on your recommendation. So we're going to get a full noir episode here, and uh, we'll have some fun. So I'm not going to go anymore to noir, uh, <laughs> because I'm going to do you a full noir episode, um, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. I'll get my noir stuff down. We'll look through the, the stuff there. Oh, Red Tornado. Somebody mentioned Red Tornado? You, you mean from the... from. The DC comic character? Yeah, Red Tornado's DC. Um, sorry. Um, he's actually a really bad version of him. Is in the first season of Supergirl as well. Uh, but there's a much better version in, like, in one of the crossover episodes that comes out later on. But uh, they did a horrible job of Red Tornado in, uh, in Supergirl. Top 10. I'm going to have to do a superhero episode as well. But I'll, I'll keep it away from Batman because apparently... Um, it really depends. I mean, like, there's different, like, eras of noir, Jav. Like, you, there's, like, what you call the original film noir, and there's the neo-noir, you know, stuff, which I almost called, like, uh, definitely reposted. Um, which, I, which, if 80s noir, I actually called neon noir. Uh, that was my own name for it, and I actually like that. Um, for the original one, uh, 50s... I mean, like, when I think noir, you think you're thinking like black and white era uh, stuff. But then you get the neo noir, or what I called neon noir, was was came out in the 70s and 80s. When you get like, you know, kind of like goodbye, uh, goodbye my love, or stuff like, uh, oh god, movies that whose names I'm not gonna remember tonight. Uh, live and live to, to live and die in L.A. Uh, or uh, Chinatown, things like that. But uh, I'm gonna go into mostly classic noir. But I will mention a couple of the other ones as well. Batman, Cyborg, Flash, Nightwing, Mar Marshman Hunter, Rorschach. Do you really consider him like DC here? I guess he is now, right? Red Tornado. Let me see. Captain Adam, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. Good list. But where, oh where, is your, is your Booster Gold? Because, you know, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, such a great combo. Uh, I like the original Booster Gold. Uh, well, not the original. Well, yeah, the original Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, as in like the Ted Cord character. Uh, like I liked the, the new guy, but Ted Cord. I'm in the I'm an '80s kid, right? So Ted Cord, Booster Gold, and you know, with Booster Gold, you know, the classic, the Justice League International, and uh, you know, kind of the pairing was kind of my uh, my Blue Beetle Booster Gold like era. I'm a huge fan of Booster Gold. Playing a different Joker. Well, Jack Napier was basically just a name that was used in uh. Yeah, like in the in the in the Tim Burton movie, uh, and pe a lot of people got upset that the Joker, you know, before he becomes a Joker, kills Batman's parents in uh, in the nineteen eighty nine Joker film. But uh, the guy that created Batman said, if he if he could have went back and uh, and redid it, he would have done that same thing. He would have had the Joker before he became. The Joker killed Batman's parents too, so uh, Bob Kane rules. <laughs> when it comes to that, Bob Kane and Bill Finger are they rule when it comes to uh, to Batman. Um, when it comes to the when it comes to the Batman. Now, which Rorschach are you talking about? Because there's a new one, in uh, now Kiss of Death. If you're talking about like the Richard Widmark one. Uh, that was remade actually with uh, Nicholas Cage, right? And um, and Dave Caruso from uh, I guess at that time he was probably on a Hill Street, not Hill Street Blues on a oh God that uh, uh, my mind's gone tonight. But uh, it was Dave Caruso and uh, I mean, Nicholas Cage in the remake. But in the original, I think it's Victor Mature and uh, I think it's Victor Mature and Richard Widmark. I can hear definitely. <laughs> Do I like Adam West? I have the 1960s series over there, Cinema Dave. Now it's pre CSI, so it would have been like uh, New York. Oh my God, is this just killing me, man? 
Watch my movie Rorschach. Okay, because there's a new Rorschach in the uh, in the comics now. There's like uh, kind of like a, the guy that took over, because he made like Watchmen into the uh, into the one. Yeah, they. Uh, I'm gonna do a soup. Tell you what, I'm gonna do a film noir episode, and I'll do I'll do you guys like even better. I'm gonna do a superhero episode as well. Besides Terminator movies with Schwarzenegger, with Sylvester Stallone, what was Arnold's last big action movie? I guess if you want to go with the Expendables, but uh, like uh, like if you want to like go that way, uh, but Schwarzenegger made way more action movies than uh. Let me go to uh, IMDb. It's the best place for that. Come on, IMDb. But yeah, you can't beat Arnold Schwarzenegger when it comes to that, when it comes to eighties action films. He just maybe Chuck Norris uh, could you know could be up there, like because Chuck Norris made a lot of stuff too. I gotta relook at that question again. Besides Terminator and movies with Sylvester Stallone, was his big? Well, he didn't do a lot of movies with Sylvester Stallone that would be big action films. Uh, but most of his stuff is like is on his own. I mean, like really good stuff. Uh, I mean, like when you're looking at stuff, when we're looking at the Conan stuff, um, Collateral Damage, uh, the uh, the Sixth Day. I really like that actually. Uh, Eraser is a huge is a, is definitely a huge one that's an underrated one true lies uh you want to talk about like some really good like action stuff like definitely true lies he, he's he's incredible in that film um now in the last 10 years well stallone hasn't done very much in the last 10 years either when uh, when you're talking about like real action stuff uh I, unless you want to count like that he went back to the well for like rambo again but <laughs> But, uh, you, you know, so it's, you know, he went back to the well with Terminator. Uh, but the Expendables was like the last round. He's doing like the Conan film. So, you know, there's like Terminator Dark Fate coming out. So, you know, maybe that one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, neither one of them have done like, you know, what I would consider too much when it came to like, you know, fantastically well done action films on, on their own i mean like i guess rambo was like the last one for uh for uh for stallone but uh that being said you know that's you know like that's what he did i mean like he did he they both did the expendables three and then you know stallone like would do like rambo uh, back in 2008, and uh, and they both did a skate plan together. Uh, but, uh, and then, you know, skate plan two, not very good, but that's it there as well. Uh, Bull to the Head, back in, you know, tw 2012, uh, is, a, is a, you know, it's a fun little film. But that being said, you know, that's pre, that's before again, like, that's before the last Expendables film. And, uh, and then it's switched around, and you see, you see Schwarzenegger in some more kind of like kind of si seriously cool films, like Maggie, you know, like which is kind of a which is a horror film, but it's like kind of one of those like kind of low key, actually kind of more thinky horror films, which I, I, kind of, I did kind of like, especially for a zombie film. Um, but also take into consideration that like Schwarzenegger went out and uh, you know kind of became like a governor and stuff, so he was kind of busy. But still, you ask which was the better action person between those two, uh, Schwarzenegger. You can take all the Rambo movies together, and Commando and Raw Deal still beats them, man. <laughs> uh, and I'm not even... We're not even getting into Conan and stuff. Stop wearing my mama's shoes. That was horrible. That's Estelle Getty, right? Like uh, from the Golden Girls. My 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 uh, my better half. She loves the Golden Girls. She's got like a T-shirt and everything. Uh, I'm serious. She got like a couple Golden Girls T-shirts. Um, but uh, 
But oh my God, yeah, that was that was something. Stop or my mom or shoot. Actually, there's a story behind it. Uh, and here's the thing. Stop or my mom or shoot was something that was offered Schwarzenegger, right? Uh, so there was a rivalry between Schwarzenegger and Stallone. You know, kind of the you know the rivalry that you know the who's the big action hero type rivalry. So Schwarzenegger maneuvered it so that Stallone and his camp would think that. Schwarzenegger was really interested in Stop Where My Mom Was Shoot. So Stallone took the movie and uh, and Schwarzenegger laughed his ass off. Uh, <laughs> baby movie, thanks for coming in tonight. I'm actually going to be heading out pretty soon myself as well. Um, but it has been a fun night. I do like this debating thing. Thank you guys so much for this. This is so cool. So, uh... No, throw them out from a train is actually good. Actually, it's really good. Um, no, and it's got and it has oh God, what's her name? She was a treasure as an actress. She was really good. She's passed away now, but she was she was a really good actress in the girl and throw them out from the train. And you got Danny DeVito, who was actually really good in it as well. Um, well. That was an incredibly well done film, dude. It's not the film that <laughs> like that. That's considered a classic. It's considered a classic for a reason. Stop or my mom or shoot was horrible. Uh, I'm, it's, Stop or my mom or shoot was so bad that it's going to be a cult classic. If it's not a cult classic now, it's going to be one in a few years. The, you watch like Shout Factory or some one of those companies. They'll put a big edition of it. And, uh, oh, 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 man. I sat through Oscar, man, in the theater. That was bad. Dolph Lundgren versus John Claude Van. Ooh, that is good. Uh, that is really good. You got some good stuff here. Uh, I like these versus things. I'm really big on versus stuff. If if you watch my channel for a while, actually, uh, when I first came here, don't remind me, Jeff, <laughs> to Nova Scotia. Uh, I started. Uh, I almost walked out. I really did. I never walked out of movies, but I almost did. Um, I started like. Uh, to do like verse like hammer versus amicus like that type of thing and i was going to do like some pre-tape videos on that type of stuff but this is way more fun uh to like do to have like somebody come up with like you know a versus type of thing we can actually if i got my computer dinner or something we can actually go over like the films like of each of the people or, or go into like companies and talk and go versus and we can actually discuss here like i'm definitely i'm opinionated i will give my opinion all the time and i get and there's lots of times that i'm wrong uh, and i will and when i'm wrong and and i get and i get beaten uh i will i will i will give you kudos for that yeah, seems got pretty bad. Uh, though, Kurosawa versus... Oh, that's really different, though. They're very different, like, film styles. Uh, the weird thing, I used to, like, sell... Well, I used to do, like, flea markets. I used to, like, sell films uh, with my dad. My dad did it way more than I did. Like, and the... Uh, Steve Seagal films, man, money. Like, it was money. If, you had, if, I, had, if I had, like, 20 Steve Seagal films... On, on on my on, on like on one of those movie tables right and i had like some classics some ones like you think really like casablanca or has like some friday the 13th or like any like, just think of anything you want to like any thing you think is going to sell i can tell you right now that i knew that i was putting out the movies right uh the steam cigar movies were gone they were gone uh, within the first, no, no, not bootlegs. <laughs> I never saw bootlegs. No, just actual films. Uh, basically, uh, um, and we'd like get sell stuff to like people like uh, we'd get stuff to people that like, couldn't get out to and stuff like that as well. Uh, you know, get movies into their house. But uh, we did like a bunch of like uh, you know back in the day, like a long time ago, years by years ago. Uh, we did like uh, we'd buy like video stores and uh, and collections and stuff like that. And uh, Started, of course, back then was VHS, right? Um, and then we went into DVD after that. 
Yes, I do. I, I love. Do I remember? My, I got a red uh, red scorpion here. I got the Arrow edition. It was one of their last uh, window boxes that didn't that uh, was selling out. Under Siege is actually really good. Uh, I do like that one. Now there's a couple like Steam Skull films that are like early ones, but usually I'll tell you one thing that I can uh, that I that I can, that I can say for him is early stuff uh, was like his three name stuff above the law, like that type of stuff. Those those were cool, and but the the key part to those films was uh was the bad guy. The bad guy's key, like is paramount. Like you can have like a decent, you can have a an okay action star, but if you got a good bad guy, man, you, you that movie, you know, movie can be money. The movie can be made. Uh, Mark for death, you know, Mark for death, out for justice, uh, like stuff for that. Those things were uh, were actually pretty cool. Uh, Tom Lee Jones, exactly. Uh, William Forsythe uh, was the best bad guy, I think. Uh, in uh, in like uh, like in in Steam Seagal films, I can't remember the name of the movie. It's probably ones ones I said, probably Mark for Death or something like that. Uh, but uh, I, I've I've never heard anything about Steve Seagal. I'd have to look into that because uh, I thought he was like, isn't he like a deputy or like a works in the marshal and the sheriff's office or something like that now? Because he did like a reality show about him, uh, which I don't watch, but but I do know that he did a reality show one time. He actually did become a. Okay, guys, I gotta look this up. I'm not gonna lie; I find this kind of hard to believe. Uh, even even if I don't like the guy, I do kind of find that hard to believe. But you're right, guys. Russian he holds American, Serbian, and Russian citizenship. Multiple women accuse. Seagal of sexual harassment or assault. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm guessing him and Trump are big friends, right? Because <laughs> they both work for Putin and have been accused of sexual assault by multiple women. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh... I, I mean exactly who I said. Yeah, and he was with LeBrock too. Like, I think... <laughs> but with him when it comes to... No, but I had to say that. That was too, that was too easy. You guys, like, set it up with the Russian thing. You guys set that up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I heard that, like, he, le I don't know, I, I'm, I hate using, like, I heard, like, there was, like, abuse in their relationship, that's why she ended up getting away from it, but she got fairly, like, she got fairly messed up herself at one point, I think, uh, it's a shame, because Kelly LeBrock, she's gorgeous, man, uh, like, I mean, that was a dream girl, when you, th if, it, if you were, like, a lot of people were to say, Cocaine is a hell of a drug, right? Um, was to say, you know, like, for a lot of people, like, think of your dream girl. Uh, then uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, they, they, you know, this would be pictures, Kelly LeBrock. Uh, well, Dolph Lundgren is better. I was better. I mean, like, to be honest with you, Dolph Lundgren is a better actor than, hey, Scudder, um, than, uh, than, than both of them, like, than, than Steven Seagal. He's definitely a much better actor. Uh, and he's more solid. He, like say what you will about like uh I think he was actually, I think you're right. I'd have to look, but I think you're right. Uh, was he? I, uh but Dolph Lundgren does does a good job. Even if you don't like his Punisher film, he he's he's solid in that film. He's he makes a really good good Punisher. Uh now they watered the character down in the film that had nothing to do with him but when you look at him and you you see frank castle uh he just does such a great job in the role and he totally committed to it um and i don't know if you guys are, are aware but punishers is one of my favorite characters uh, 
it's kind of comical, Ghostbuster, so, because uh, Steven Seagal, uh, my 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 better half, she's from uh, she's from Morocco, right? And like she spends a lot of time, we spent a lot of time over. Well, her family stuff over in Paris and Paris, like you know, over in Europe. And Steven Seagal actually gets gets ragged on a lot over in uh, over in Europe uh, for. Uh, for not being the brightest guy, for making some, for making some mistakes and stuff, uh, I didn't know that actually until uh, no, sorry, not Steve's called John Claude Van Damme, uh, until like she she told me that that he John Claude Van Damme for was a bit of a joke actually. Yes, he did play He Man. He played He Man back in the Masters of the Universe with uh, oh, God, what's his name? The guy that uh, he was in Star Trek uh, plays plays the kid, right? But the, uh, there's a new He-Man coming out, which I'm hoping is going to be good. <laughs> She's probably seen it. She's watched a lot of his films. Like, we love action films, right? We, we watch a lot of action films here in this house. Um, like, a ton of them. And like those are like that. That's her thing. Like, uh, I will buy like a bunch of action movies just. But we watch. We like the really cheesy bad ones. So like it's serious Santiago stuff like that. We'll watch that. Oh yeah, man, Kurt Russell. Are you serious? Awesome. I love Kurt Russell. Frank Langella. Uh, he actually. This is one of my favorite Draculas actually. Um, he uh, he played Dracula back in 1979. For me, like I I, uh, I went to the theater to uh, to see it, and it was like my first Dracula in the theater. So like that's huge. Was huge for me. Uh, Langella was like a stage actor, and uh, the, the Dracula movie that he did, yeah, he played Skeletor. Uh, that was him under all that makeup. Uh, but uh, Langella is like is is brilliant in that. He's great in like uh, oh god, I think when they did what's that? so much. He man's being re actually it is being remade, and the guy that's doing it, I'm pretty sure you can correct me if I'm wrong, Katana, but I think it's a guy that's done a lot. Of uh, of uh, of like uh, like Netflix movies actually, because uh, I'm pretty sure he did a Netflix movie that I saw. Um, uh, I think like Gallo was in a Lolita film too. Like he played the role. I'm pretty sure. I don't quote me on this, but I think he played the role that was played by Peter Sellers in the original Lolita. I'd have to check again, but I think that was Langella in the remake. I mean. Uh, I'm curious now. Lolita, 1997. Was that Langella? Don't go give me an ad. With the one with uh, Jeremy Irons and Dominic Swain. I think that was Langella. Pretty sure. So I may be totally wrong though. No, but it was Langella was Claire uh, Quilty in uh, in that one because that was the role that Peter Sellers played in the uh, in the original, like uh, in the Kubrick version of Lolita. I'm a really big fan of that film, by the way. Uh, I actually read the book too by Nabokov. Uh, but uh, I just thought it was really, really well done, and it kind of creeped me out a bit. You know, especially where I got you know I got kids and stuff like that. Uh, you, that subject matter is kind of you know ew. Uh, kind of like going back and forth on action stars. It is fun. I think Lily is underrated, uh, and I, I, the reason I say that is because there's some of his movies are very showy and very flashy, or, or they have something that uh, that you know that that kind of makes them stand out uh, based on you know like even if Barry Lyndon, which is a pretty dry film, right? In my opinion, I know you like it. Um, it, you know, it stands out based on the lighting and stuff like that, right? But, uh, oh, Ninth Gate is amazing. Um, I really like Ninth Gate. I know a lot of people don't. I, I like it. Uh, but uh, Lolita is one of those films that's got to stand on its story and its performances. Yeah, like, it, 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 that's what it goes with. It's got to stand on its story and its performances. Yeah, James Mason, exactly, one of his best performances of all time. Um, and I think that... It's not a showy. It's a lot of like uh, Kubrick's work. It's like there's nothing like uh, kind of there's no gimmick to to make it stand out. It's just well acted. 
and uh, and well shot and and it is definitely still it's a controversial uh film and a controversial subject matter to be doing uh so uh to get guys like james mason and peter sellers uh to be like to do to do those roles and to like kind of put themselves out there you gotta you gotta go raw for something like that man it is very highly revered now actually uh barry Lyndon is uh it's always one that i think i gotta go back to and give another chance to uh because i'll be honest with you i never really got into barry Lyndon, but that being said i will i will be completely honest and tell you, i don't think i've ever really given the movie a chance either and that's the thing oh Cary grant would not have done that uh, Cary grant probably would have done it but his agent would not have let him do it look Cary grant wanted to do like a hammer he wanted to do phantom of the opera remember uh a rambo uh, <laughs> um but uh but he uh he, he wasn't allowed to do it his agent just wanted him to do it can Cary grant killing people just not a good idea well we'll have a hunchback kill the people and Cary grant can just be the phantom Cary Grant's not doing this film. Uh, and then Herbert Lamb came in. That's a... Uh, you guys, tonight, I just want to say this, took a video and started talking about Eureka and I will admit, started a bit dry and made it so much better. So this goes to show you how important the interactivity portion of these videos are. What's the... Oh, Kiss of Death. Oh, Richard Woodmark and Kiss of Death. Definitely. If you haven't seen Kiss of Death, it's a fantastic one. That's a scary typecasting to have, man. Well, nearly. That's the thing. In Suspicion, even in Suspicion, which is a fantastic film, they had to switch that ending, right? Uh, to, uh, you know, oh, look, he's actually not. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> Kiss the Girls, actually, I did. I'm a fan of the books. Uh, so I, uh, those were big for me. Uh, what was the other one, too, that they did? They did like a bunch of the novels. Uh, I think it's Pat Patterson. It's Patterson novels. I saw the third season of Stranger Things. I think it, uh, the way that I put it, as I love the first season of Stranger Things, the second season's okay. Uh, the third season, way back in form again, way better. Along came Spire, thank you. Um, then uh, comes James Patterson, right? This is James Patterson I'm thinking of. That's the author that did those books, right? For those movies. Because uh, I used to read a lot of James Patterson. Uh, but, uh, there, yeah, I, uh, third season's way better than season two. Like, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, third season just is really, really good. It's like, it's a solid, it's solid all the way through. Wrong turn. That is an odd statement to make, <laughs> but uh, wait a minute. So, was it, who did Wrong Turn? Uh, wrong Turn is Fox, but didn't doesn't oh. Uh, does Disney own Fox now? Disney owns so much, guys. Uh, it's hard for me to keep up. Oh, okay. So yeah, Wrong Turn is Fox. It's Disney now then. Well, that's gonna be different. <laughs> Because, you know, because they're doing another wrong turn. They're actually remaking it. Um, I think it's being remade. It's not a sequel, right? It's being remade, right? That's that's what I heard. Uh, is that they're doing a, like a reboot or remake a wrong turn. I'm not sure how you guys got on the wrong turn subject, but uh, I literally just, uh, I was, I've been taking up, taking, I bought some of these here cases at my local Dollarama and I ordered some big like 400 like bi like plus binders because uh, we're you know in around a couple years I'm moving to Morocco I'm putting like uh, I'm taking my DVDs and stuff and putting them in these cases now uh, so that I can slowly start moving my collection over and uh, 
That way, if something happens when we're moving the cases and stuff over, uh, I don't lose any of my DVDs. Like they're coming or Blu-rays, they're coming with me. Uh, so I'm slowly going to start moving some stuff over. So I'm just I'll have still have the cases there, but I'll have some they'll be over there. And the essentials will be like uh, I'll make sure the essentials are are here to watch. But I want to make sure that I don't lose anything in transit. So I've been like picking up some of these, and like uh, every one, once in a while I'll grab some and I'll put this. Uh, I'll put some in the uh, in here, and every time Hen goes over to Morocco, she takes a case. She can take a case or two over with her, a binder or two, and uh, I'll slowly get my entire movie collection over there. And then it's just getting the movies, the DVD cases and the Blu-ray cases over, which should be a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing now for the last. Uh, well, I started the, today, but I've been like I've been planning for the last few days. I liked it. Uh, I, it was really neat, actually. Um, uh, so, is it my place? <sighs> yes, yes, and no. Um, we have a we got a house, and uh, that's huge. Uh, like this place here, this entire house here would would fit like in in a, in a portion of the house though that like we got morocco but like well, I, we're probably living in the city most of the time like we're in marrakesh uh and kind of going back and forth but we got a condo in marrakesh which would be definitely be smaller of course it's a condo than uh than, than the house here but uh we're we're planning our uh like we've already started planning our media room uh for uh for morocco right so basically, we're the living room is going to be uh, we're going to have like the you know the 65 inch like screen uh, there and around it all around like all around it. if you kind of picture like the the, the screen there and like all across, all around it there's going to be like uh, like this this shelving that's going to like encompass all of it and that's where like you're going to see Blu-rays and you can see box sets and stuff going around the around the room like that. So that's how we, we got that planned. In Turkey, I don't know. I've never been to Turkey. Uh, I know that there's like there is censorship in uh, in the in the country Morocco, as in like films being being made and stuff there. But you still get to see them. You can still see them. Oh, I hate when that happens. Scotter, you have the worst problems with this stuff, man. Actually, I like the age of consent. Uh, that's the one with uh, a very young. I got it over here, Parliament Press Bridger. That's uh, well, that's just Powell, right? That's not Press Bridger. Uh, age of consent is just Michael Powell, I think. I don't think that's one that they did together. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but that's Helen Mirren. I think it's a really young Helen Mirren. Because she doesn't like a lot of. She does a lot of nudity in a lot of films, right? Uh, but. Uh, There, uh, see, th that's one of the things I love about Chris Hemsworth is that he's he'll go there. He'll he'll do that stuff. He'll uh, like he'll he'll do like 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 Fat Thor and, and enjoy the hell of it. Caligula. That's it. I like I really like the see. I, I might be in the minority. But Age Consent is one that I really liked. I actually was like super excited. I found like a like kind of this uh, this kind of box set. Well, two film set actually that had Age of Consent and another film on it. Uh, for what do I think, Caligula? It's okay. I mean, I don't think it's Tino Brass's best film. Um, but for what he had to work with, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think it's too, like I'm never gonna. You're never gonna hear me say Caligula is one of like the greats of all time. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it, it's it, it's it's okay. Uh, it's not great. It's uh, it's not a. You know, it's not. It it it's it's decent. I mean, like uh, I I like it for what it is. 
No, man, he didn't ruin Gore Vidal's career. I'm, Tino Brass is actually really good as a director. Uh, like, but there was a lot of, lot of like, like fingers in the in the. This was a film that was done by, was uh, Pentas is it Pentas Productions? I think Pentas Productions. So that'd be Bob Guccione, right? Uh, and you can bet his hands. Bob Guccione was a guy. Was, Guccione was a guy that truly considered like he considered himself an artist. That that was his thing. Uh, but uh, but there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes when it comes to uh, comes to that film. It like considering all the stuff that went on, I, I think it was a pretty it was okay. Um, and, you know, it was fun film. Uh, you know, I, I watched it. I got to my collection. Uh, it's not something I could watch every day. I'll be honest with you. Like, and maybe this is telling. Um, but I, I, I'd watch Waterworld before I turn on Caligula. That, that, that's just me. Um, I missed the question that uh, that, you, that you just asked me. Uh, was Gucci any more of an exploit? They're all exploiters, uh, from you know to to a, to an extent. I mean, like, uh, don't think that there's any real difference between Bob Guccione and 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 you have Hefner or any or any or uh, any of that stuff. Some of them actually does uh, do some great. Uh, I can watch Click a lot easier than I can watch Sailor. Larry Flint. There you go. There's another one. Larry Flint's very political. Uh, that's thing Larry. Larry Flint never made no bones about the f fact of what he did, right? Like he had a bunch of strip clubs and stuff like that, and his like thing started out basically as like a little magazine that he was doing for strip clubs to promote the people, the, the ladies that were coming in to his clubs, and it, and it kind of it steamrolled. He wanted to make a magazine. He talked to people about it. I actually watched a documentary on him, um, and then he ended up doing a ended up doing like a, doing the magazine. People vs. Life. I've seen that in a long time. That was a good film. You're right, uh, but uh, yeah, all of them. You know, they're all. That's what. That's the, what they do. But each one of them has their own key thing. Um, Playboy, for instance, introduced a lot of classic, like, like literature. A lot of really, really great, um, really great short stories from fantastic authors, right? And uh, Playboy also did the, the heralded Playboy interview, which. As you know, as a guy that did, does consider that did journalism and consider, still to this day consider myself part journalist, uh, they do some of the best interviews. They did some of the best interviews I ever read. Um, Flint, Larry Flint, you know, love him or hate him, and he really did push the envelope with a lot of stuff. He went towards like really strong towards the political stuff. So basically, uh, there's another magazine. I'm not going to say the name, but but you can look it up. Uh, where he basically that he. Uh, he really lifted heavily from another magazine, and that's not Playboy. It was a good magazine. I mean, like, uh, but I think that he would have been perfectly fine making a magazine without any new or, any, or anything in there. Uh, oh, you're bad, man. <laughs> I missed that. I'm sorry, dude. See crawl. Actually, I heard crawl is really good, um, so I'm real. I'm looking forward to that one. I probably not. I don't know if I can get sit in theater or not. It really depends. But uh, crawl is one that I'm actually uh, kind of excited about. Razzle. What is razzle? Do they have drive-in theaters in Morocco? I don't think so. Not that I know for. Uh, they have like huge cineplexes in Morocco. Uh, one of the biggest theaters I've ever I've I've seen like in my uh, life was in uh, was in Casablanca. They had a huge cine they got a huge cineplex in Casablanca. If, if you ever get there, uh, if you ever get to Morocco, way like in all seriousness, uh, go to the Morocco Mall. It is uh, massive and and super impressive. Thor. Oh wait, Thor is not Greek. As in, like, oh Norse. Are you talking about Norse mythology? I, I'm not keeping up, guys. <laughs> I apologize. I'm, I'm missing a lot of comments. Oh really? Was it? I can I be honest with you? I did. I read like I read certain ones when I was a kid. Uh, like, but uh, 
It's not something I really kept up on. I, th I but I, uh, I used to like a lot of the uh, the articles and stuff. I don't know what Razzle is. I never heard of. It. <laughs> uh, like mine was like down to the, like, and I tried to keep this fairly fairly kid friendly. Uh, you're probably going there next year. Let me know before you go there, man. Uh, I can definitely recommend uh, some places and some stuff to you. Like places that you really need to go if you go to Morocco. Uh, like 110%. Because uh, there are uh, there's places that I did not know about until I got there. And I will always go back to a certain... Essaware is a place that 110%. If, if I go to Morocco, if I've gone there for a week, if I've gone there for 10 days... Uh, at least two of, the, two of those days, I'm I'm gone Essaouira because it is just such a great place. Uh, oh man, you just go on the beach and and just relax. The food is fantastic. Probably taking students there. Are you going like right into? Uh, so are you going like to Casablanca or? Because uh, like there's you can go to the Casablanca airport. And you can go there. Uh, I'm not sure if there's one in Marrakesh or not. I'm trying to remember. I think there is. Uh, but I think, well, if if not, then you just get the train from. Casablanca in the Marrakesh, like the students, uh, which is fantastic, actually. Uh, I recommend, you know, that definitely, obviously, you got to take from Casablanca. Uh, Marrakesh is, again, uh, big. And uh, Essaouira, let, let them see where, where Orson Welles and uh, the Beatles and, and, uh, and Bob Marley used to go and, and do their art. And, and write and think and just chill and hang out where where Alfred Hitchcock hung out. Uh, that'd be a that's that's Essaouira. That was that that is one of the creative hubs, uh, I think, and it's a place that I think everybody that that likes uh, that likes film, or uh, or music, or art, that uh, that they should check out at least once in their life. Uh, there's an actual great there's a cool statue, of. Uh, of Orson Welles there. That's where he filmed Othello at. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. And there's a Moroccan film festival that happens every year uh, that's uh, ran by uh, by Scorsese and a couple other guys. So uh, I, I keep wanting to get there, but I haven't got there yet. But my sister-in-law, she uh, she's actually done, like, she's, she goes there and she's actually worked there. So she's met them all. Like she's met the uh, like people I love to meet. She's met Scorsese. She's met all these, all these people. And uh, I'm like so jealous of her for that. Anyway, guys, at a hundred and two minutes, I think we've done a pretty epic Saturday night video here. Uh, we have talked about the Eureka sale. We have we have debated who the best Batman is. I've ranted uh, my opinion on that, which is just my opinion at the end of the day. Whoever you like, that's your favorite Batman. Uh, so, you know, the, whoever that is, we've decided we're going to do a film noir episode coming up next and a superhero one as well. Um, we talked about Sylvester Stallone and Sylvester, yeah, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and we actually mentioned Morocco, which I would do a bigger video on in the near future, actually. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, film noir is probably going to be my next video, Javid, because I actually, that's actually something I can actually talk about a lot, and um, that'll be fun. i got a lot of film noir I can show here as well, and I can give you some recommendations. But thank you so much, guys. For me right now, it's seriously, it's time for tea. Um, I am Aaron. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. You guys are the movie club, and if anything, if there was any time that showed how awesome you guys are and how good that you make this this is the night that did it this video started out kind of quiet and kind of dry but you guys stepped up to the plate and you guys made it awesome so thanks for coming in have a great saturday enjoy your sunday i'm gonna have a busy sunday i'm gonna try and make a video tomorrow maybe i'll do the film more video tomorrow if i don't we'll do it on monday either way we will get that done and uh, i will see you again next time have a great evening and enjoy your weekend